Good morning, everyone. It is, it is so good to see you all. And many of you, uh, for the first time, I'm getting to meet you as well in person. And, and it's great to see you all at home who are watching on the live stream. Uh, happy Easter and welcome. We can finally say it now. I, I want one more rousing alleluia. So on the count of three, say it with me. One, two, three. Alleluia! <clears throat> Never get sold. Love that. It is a uh, true joy to be with you this morning. And I'd ask uh, as we begin to enter the word to, today that you would pray with me. And please, please pray with me. God, we are so grateful for this day you have given us. Thank you that you have come to us, that you lived among us, and that you died for us. And that today we celebrate you have defeated death, and that you are with us forever. And so, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would be with us now. Open up the scriptures that we might hear what you'd have for us today. Speak to our hearts. Show us your face. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Okay, I've got a question for you all out there. Do I have any sleepwalkers? Any sleepwalkers? It's okay. Don't be shy. I see some hands. Any sleepwalkers? Spouses, keep them honest. I have a really good friend who is a chronic sleepwalker. Her name is Sally. This is not me. Her name is Sally. And one day, Sally complained to me about a stomach ache. It's so painful, she went to the doctor, and she got it checked out. The doctor came back into the room with an x-ray. And he had a face of worry, but also curiosity. And he asked Sally, is there anything out of the ordinary, Sally, that you like to eat? Slightly startled by the question, Sally responded, well, no, not, not really. I have a pretty normal diet. Why do you ask? To which he revealed an x-ray, put it up to the light board, and pointed to the pit of her stomach and said, Sally, that's a handful of pocket change. A handful of pocket change. That's right. As it turns out, my friend Sally, her little sleepwalk, late night snack, it wasn't a bowl of popcorn. It wasn't a slice of pizza. She went to her dresser and she grabbed a handful of coins. Although I will admit, they counted up the change. $2.25, still the cheapest late night snack you can get. So lesson learned, sleepwalkers, hide your pocket change. I think it's, it's a bit surprising the things we can do without being aware of them or even fully awake. I'm not sure about you, but it kind of feels like this past year has been li lived in a fog. You guys know what I'm talking about? It's felt so foggy. It's like that moment when you're waking up from sleep and you can function, but not fully, where your brain can make decisions, but maybe not the best ones. And maybe you're here today and you're feeling a little groggy. Maybe it's been a while since you've been to church. Maybe you haven't attended on the live stream, or maybe it's been a while since you've considered praying or singing a hymn. Or maybe it's been a little while since you've even thought about God. And as it gets warmer and the sun begins to shine and people are getting vaccinated, perhaps, maybe it feels like New York is beginning to wake up a little bit. Maybe it feels like we're waking up. I don't know if it feels like we're waking up right now to you guys. I think we're, we're starting to wake up. Perhaps it feels like this pandemic will not last forever. Perhaps it feels like you're beginning to stir from your sleepwalking of this past year. Like waking up from a bad dream, right? Trying to get our bearings early in the morning. 
And maybe you're feeling the early signs of hope. And I want to say today, church, it's time for us to wake up. It's time for Christ to shine upon you. And today, I want to take a look at our gospel reading from John. Another early morning, that first Easter morning. Let's go there. It's dark, and it's chilly, and Mary is going to the tomb. And she sees the stone is rolled away. She must be seeing things. This is a bad dream. And she feels the pit in her stomach. She pinches herself. This can't be happening. But when Mary realizes this is all quite real, and the tomb has been opened, she sprints back to Peter and the other disciple, John. She rouses them from slumber. Guys, wake up. They wake with a start. And they say, Mary, half awake, go back to bed. You're making it all up. But she insists, it's real. I have seen it. So they wipe the sleep from their eyes, stumbling over their own feet, and they run. They run to see what's happened. And they think to themselves, how could anything be, be worse than the past two days? Their friend, their leader, their rabbi Jesus has been killed. Their life is directionless. Their hope has been snuffed out. John, apparently a bit quicker, gets to the tomb first. And he sees the burial wrappings, what they say, the grave clothes, what they wrapped Jesus in. And then Peter arrives, goes into the open tomb. He also sees grave clothes that they wrapped Jesus in, a burial shroud for his face. But did you guys catch what's next? Something happens. Something happens in that tomb. And let's not miss this. As John is looking at empty grave clothes, the scripture says what? He saw and believed. He saw and believed. Scripture also puzzlingly says, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Let me get this right. They saw cloth on the ground, and they believed. And they didn't even understand. And then they went home. They just left. These disciples who'd witnessed the death of Jesus saw his grave clothes and said, the scripture says simply, they believed. They had burial clothes without a corpse. They had a tomb without a body. A stone rolled away, previously set in its place. They had a piece of the puzzle, but they didn't know the whole story. They were half awake. They're in a daze of pain and grief. They just lost their friend. And yet, it said, they believed. How is it? I, I need your help here. How is it? that we can come to believe in something that we cannot see, that we don't fully grasp? How is it that we can come and try and grab at something called truth? We've been talking about truth for weeks now. How can we grasp at truth and not really know it? Especially when everyone around us says, oh, I have the truth, I know the truth. How can we grab that? How can there be any hope or belief, or truth at all, if we can't figure it out, or understand it, or comprehend it, or see it, or know it. Friends, what is our Christian faith all about? And what are we doing here today? Let me tell you what we're doing here today. Today. Today we are here to testify together to the truth. That is the act of what we're doing. And we're testifying to this truth. That Jesus Christ is not in a tomb. Or a corpse in the ground. But rather he is alive with skin. With flesh. With a heartbeat. 
He's fully human and fully God. He is alive. We testify to the truth that Jesus died. His heart stopped. His skin grew cold. And he came back to life in that body, defeating death. We testify to the truth also, if we're honest, that we can't comprehend that reality. There's no science or math that can figure it out. We can't intellectualize it enough. The thing that we get to do today is choose to believe. Believe that Jesus is the Messiah and God. Believe that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Why is that, friends? Because belief, the act of believing in the resurrection of Jesus is one of the most central things of the Christian faith. And today, in our community, as all angels, as the broader church, at home, we say with our, with our mouths and in our hearts that Jesus is alive. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. Jesus is alive. He is alive. Today is about believing, despite not fully understanding. It's the essence of our faith. It's the currency of Christianity. It's belief. I just made it rain for a second, belief. That's what we're doing. We gotta make it rain belief, y'all. Come on. It's what we're doing. It's the currency. C.S. Lewis has a, a quote that I was super into during college. I still love it. I'm going to read it to you. <clears throat> he says, I believe in Christianity as I believe in the rising sun, not because I see it, but by it I see all else. This morning we are testifying to the truth that without the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are left in the darkness. We're hopeless. We're dead in our sin. It would be like we lived as sleepwalkers eating pocket change. Without the resurrection, God isn't God. Jesus isn't truth. And we aren't saved. But with belief, by believing, thought, this is wild, just Go with me here for a second. By believing in Jesus, we have life. Through belief, life sh shines on us. It wakes us up from our fog. It gives us purpose and hope and life. Now listen to this. John 20, verses 30 through 31. Someone editorialized it and wrote the section, The Purpose of the Book. If you're wondering what John's gospel is about, you should probably read these two verses. The purpose of the book. This is what it says. Verse 30. Now John, now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these, he's saying all the events of the gospel, are written so that you may come, reader, you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, that through believing, you may have life in his name. The gospel of John is written so you could believe. It's written so you could hear the story, so you could experience God in your life. Now, I know. I know what you're saying. John, you can believe in a lot of stuff. Why well, do I got to believe in Jesus? I believe in myself. I love, I love my self-help. I love my self-care. I get it. That's good. I believe in my friends, my neighbor, my family. Good. That's great. I believe in systems. I believe in the government. <laughs> I believe in a lot of things. Good for you. That's great. Sincerely, you should believe in those things. But today, today, and as Christians, we testify to the truth that only by believing in Jesus, and let me be specific, only by believing in Jesus do we have eternal life. I can believe in my mom all day long. Mom, I love you. I can believe in Jimmy. He's all right. I can believe in you guys. I don't have eternal life through that. Only by believing in Jesus do we have eternal life. This is our hope. You want to wake up from the fog from this past year? I do. I'm trying to wake up. Jimmy's asleep all the time. 
Come on, man. Perk up. Let's go. Look, you want to wake up from this past year, this fog? I feel you guys are sleepy. I get it. It's weird. We're back together, kind of. You want to wake up? Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus and practice the way of love. Believe in his name. And his light will shine upon you. That's what scripture says. That's what our faith is about. That's what we're doing here today. George Herbert is this, uh, this salty old Anglican priest. And he wrote this super old poem called The Dawning. Y'all go check it out later. People at home, check it out right now. The Dawning. I, I want to read a small snippet. Old English here, so bear with me. Awake, sad heart, whom sorrow ever drowns. Take up thine eyes, which feed on earth. Unfold thy forehead, gathered into frowns. Thy Savior comes, and with him mirth. Awake, awake, and with his burial linen, dry thine eyes. Christ left his grave clothes, that when grief draws tears or blood, we might not want a handkerchief. What does all this mean for us today, you might be asking? Good question. What does all this mean? I got two things as we begin to wrap up. Two things that I think this means for us today. The first is I think believing in Jesus completely changes the way we encounter death. Believing in Jesus changes everything we know about death. Everything. The way we conceptualize it, the way we talk about it, the way we anticipate our own death, it changes it. I remember when I was doing my hospital chaplaincy in seminary, and I had a number of beautiful, hard opportunities to sit by the bedside of people as they died. Maybe you've sat by the bedside of someone as they've left this world. You've had that privilege, that opportunity, that hard moment. And maybe you had this happen to you. Never have I believed in the resurrection of Jesus more than when I was able to stare death in the face and hold someone's hand as they left this world. Ironically, it's in death that we realize the importance of life in Jesus. In fact, I think when we focus only on our life here and now, we have no need for the resurrection. The resurrection, friends, it makes a fool out of death. A fool out of death. It turns an instrument of fear into a child's toy. And you're right. It doesn't eliminate suffering. We all will suffer. It does open up an eternity of hope. An eternity of hope. And it allows us to stare down death in the face and not be fearful. It allows the courage and hope to put faith in Jesus, to die daily to sin and pride, and be raised in new life in Christ. I had a seasoned uh, priest once tell me that whenever he would sit by the bedside of someone who was dying, he would tell them, he would tell them this, he'd hold their hand and he'd say, when you close your eyes and you leave this world and you wake up and you meet Jesus, go with him. He is your friend. He will take you to a place where you will never know pain or grief or fear again. He will dry your eyes and he will be with you forever. This is the hope of the resurrection. This is what it means to believe and have faith. You'll never be alone again. You will have your Father in heaven to hold your hand forever and say, it's okay, I'm here. I'm with you. Wake up, come with me. Take my hand. And the second thing this means for us today is that believing in Jesus changes the way we see our neighbor 
to your neighbor. Look to your right. Look to your left. People at home, do, do a 180. Look around. You see these people. I see you. I see you. The way to wake up, you want to wake up with the fog? We've got to live in community. You can't do it alone. It's anything we've learned. Living alone is hard. We are meant to live in community. We have longed to be together. And what a joy to see one another. But you see, we do this not because we're so great or lovely, because I really like hanging out with Jimmy. That's not actually why we're doing all this. We're doing this because at the center of this, we share something. Do you guys know that we have something in common? I don't know many of you. I'm just meeting you for the first time. Do you know why I want to come up and, and, and give you a hug? Why I want to know you? It's because we share something. What is that? We share faith. We share belief in Jesus. We share hope. And that changes everything. It changes everything when we have that in common. Because of our shared belief in Jesus, because of our shared practice of living in the light, serving our neighbor, loving others as ourselves, laying down our lives so that Christ's light may shine upon us. That's what today is about. All right, as we close, just as a reminder, today we are testifying to the truth. What is that truth? Hear this, friends. The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. The morning has arrived and the day is here. Wake up! It's here! All that's left today is that you turn to Jesus and believe. So that together we can be a community. One who testifies to this true story. These aren't just words on a page. This is a true story. We're living in it now. We're doing it now. And, and that we, we love each other today so that we might live that out as a community here and now. Amen. Take it an amen. Amen. amen.